Hello class and welcome to this Star Trek 25th anniversary walkthrough for the NES right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and we've actually got an interesting kind of intro for this game. It's quite gripping actually, at least as much as a game from 1991 for the NES can be. Let's find out what's going on with the crew of the Starship Enterprise at this point in time. Entering the Sigma Iota system. There's Kirk. This obviously covers the original 1960s and the subsequent movies that cast. So having problems in the Iosha system. There's Spock. Looking like he's reading cue cards on Saturday Night Live, actually. <laughs> But yes, unstable turbulence. Scan the sector. I like this game for a, a number of reasons. It's really in a class of its own on the NES. Kind of an adventure game, but they mix in some action and uh, some exploration. It's fun being on the bridge of the Enterprise here. You can interact with your crew members. You can pick and choose who you take down to planet surfaces with you. It's really a, a rare breed on the NES overall. The music's pretty good too at uh, creating a ominous vibe right off the bat. What do you think, Spock? Sensors? Fluctuating greatly. Kind of dimensional hole. Uh oh. Doesn't sound good. Get us out of here, Sulu. That's right. Not looking good for the crew of the Starship Enterprise here. And we haven't even touched the controller yet. Yeah, more power, Scotty. I'm gonna get a classic line or a variation on his classic line. I know we get one from Bones. Giving it all you got, Captain? Close enough. <laughs> the hole is getting closer. Just look at me, Spock. Learn your lines next time. Breaks the immersion. Question is, where are we now? Where did it spit us out? Yeah, can you get us back with the Starfleet Uhura? We're way out of range at this point. More than that. What say you, Spock? I don't even think it knows where we are. 
That's how far out we are. So yeah. No longer in Federation space or known space. And there you go. How about that for a setup? There's your classic intro. In terms of difficulty, this game is, uh... It's one of those games where if you know where to go and what to do, then it's a lot more manageable. We're going to tell you all of that over the course of this walkthrough. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10 overall, because there are a couple tricky battle-related points. In terms of frustration, you might be throwing your controller across the room during said battle points in a game, which is not really optimized for the, the action side of things. But we'll talk about that as we get there. In many ways, I have complete control of the con today. I mean, I normally do, but I don't have the same support for my TAs as I normally do because this game just really doesn't lend itself to it. It's more of an adventure game where, again, if you know where to go and what to do, then you're going to be in good shape. I've got you covered on that front, so Gary and Blaze have the day off. Fluff is going to provide a couple facts, but I'll see you and me today, class. So let's run the intro and get into this Star Trek 25th Anniversary walkthrough. Alright, as we start a new game, you'll see there's a continue option there. It involves putting in very complex passwords, which uh, you can get at various points in the game, or look them up online, you can pick up at pretty much any point. But as we pick back up after the events of that intro there, as Kirk explains while we were investigating that strange gravitational disturbance, near Sigma Iosha. We got caught in a dimensional gate, never a good thing. We couldn't break free. And now we don't know where the heck we are. Orbiting some planet which looks like Earth, but to be a spoiler, it is not Earth. And we're now in uncharted space. Which, when you think about it, isn't the worst thing for the Enterprise to be in. That's sort of its whole five-year mission, right? Exploring uncharted space. Admittedly, we like to go on our own terms, but uh, we got our main shut down. We're on backup power at the moment. So we're going to need some some fuel for the Enterprise before we can get moving. Or we can use those warp engines. It's the dilithium crystals. It's always the problem, right? Well, the Enterprise runs on, and uh, thankfully, I think if we do a scan of the planet right here, I think Spock is going to tell us, there is a, well, I guess he's going to give us bad news, <laughs> that uh, our orbit, yeah, we're just going to get sucked into the planet, essentially, and burn up, unless we can get ourselves some more dilithium crystals. But there might be a small supply on this planet. There we go. So here at the start, normally you would get to choose your, your landing party. But in this case, for this first mission, we're just going to go down with Bones and Spock. And we have this classic scene right here, which we parodied a bit in our Blaster Master intro. Don't ask me how that makes sense. You just have to check it out. But I like this. Uh, Kirk and Spock always have a, a moment alone to uh, converse on the mission or life in general in some cases. It's nice. Never really understood what Kirk was holding on to. Is it like an old-fashioned, you know, early 20th century elevator control or something like that? Kind of looks like a, a ping pong paddle or something, or a communicator, but I just don't know why he'd be holding it in that way. Another one of my favorite parts of this game is when we cut away to the transporter guy. <laughs> just looks like he's 
just really into his job. Could also be like a DJ set. And then his arm looks very long to me right there. I don't know why. But anyway, I digress. We are finally warping down to the planet and finally going to be in a position where we can control what's going on in the game. We're down here on this forest swamp-like planet. At least this part of the planet. Big structure to the north that we'll check out and a, a village to the south as we take a look now at the controls for Star Trek 25th Anniversary. Pretty straightforward, fire our phaser with B, A does pretty much everything else. We can check our health with select and uh, pause, bring up more options with start, like switching our phaser from stun to kill. If you take a look now at the Briggs notes for Star Trek the 25th Anniversary, pretty straightforward for an adventure leaning game. Nowhere to go what to do, and make sure you take down the right party. The right personnel every time. Make sure your phaser is on stun, which is the default setting here at the start. And then scan it with A. And we can get a sample of the, the, uh, the plant right here. Now note you can switch your phaser over to kill to do serious damage. And there's really no... Very careful taking damage. Main thing you want to do is stay away from pretty much everything in this game, but again, we can check our health. You can't lose-lose by taking too much damage. You'll just get so hurt that they force you to return back to the Enterprise, so... There's the weird glitchiness that's going on the screen there. Yeah, we can go up to people and talk to them with A. We're gonna make a beeline to this main hut right here. We just seem like such nerds. He appears to be doing a ritualistic dance, Captain. Sometimes they'll just talk as soon as you get close enough to them. Brought a shooting plant. So we're going to bring up our inventory. Start, go to use item. The only thing we have right now. Drop it in the fire with A. And uh, he's going to give us some repellent, which is going to be useful for keeping the, uh, the blood worms away in the swamp. Just does that by default. Make sure you scan it to pick it up. Everyone's always very formal about uh, picking things up. Should I, should I add this piece of rope to our inventory, Captain? Yeah, pick it up. You might need it. You never know. So note that uh, there are other places to go in the village, but in this walkthrough we're just going to be showing you how to beat the game pretty much as efficiently as possible, so I encourage you in your own, if, if you're uh, using this as a walkthrough to, to follow along, that you go off and experience more of the game here and there, but we're just going to take this repellent now. You'll notice our other crew members just sort of don't perfectly stick to us. In fact, we're completely separated right now, but once we enter the next area, somehow they've miraculously caught back up to us. So note you'll still see some blood worms here and there. There's also going to be some creatures that come at us. Just give them a shock. A uh, stun shot. Nearly stunned. That's right. Should be back on its feet before too long. There you go. Meanwhile, something else will kill it, but that's not our problem. If you do have your phaser set to kill and you shoot creatures, They'll just yell at you a couple times. It's not a big deal. It's not like we're on a point system or anything, but if you want to follow Starfleet regulations and everything, don't just go around shooting everything. The phaser on stun mode will do just fine in terms of self-defense most of the time. We'll let you know if you ever need to switch it over or if you need a bit more power. You'll see the blood worms here and there. Mostly they'll be staying away from you. I know there's some when we go north towards that settlement later. Be very uh, vigilant with these creatures, too. They're kind of hard to see in the tall grass, but... We have a, an abode of the creature. Pop down and check it out, see if there's there's going to be a piece that we need for this, the, uh, the, the building up to the north that they mentioned earlier. Grab this eye to gain entry. And we get a backtrack. So yeah, not so many blood worms here, but uh, once we get closer to that 
building to the north. You'll see the blood worms, and the repellent will keep them away, but they, don't, they only move so quickly, so we want to make sure that we don't, you know, run into them and just assume they'll get away from us in time. We still want to avoid them to a point. You can't tell me that creature's not going to drown now. It's going to be <laughs> stunned for two hours below water. We essentially and effectively just killed that creature, but... Not technically a kill shot from us, so... No one complains about it, I suppose. Plus, Starfleet might not even exist in wherever we are right now, or whatever time this is. Here's one of the blood worms. You see them staying away from us. It'll knock you down just like getting shot by one of those plants and take away a bit of your health, so... Be careful around them. As we head west and just kind of navigate the, uh, the tall shrubbery here. Finally heading northeast to get to the building up at the top here. I think it's... See if I can get around this way. I think we need to go east ultimately. There we go. Head up, we gotta use the eye right here, so we'll go into our and scan it first. See what we're dealing with. Alien metal of some kind. And I think there is a a cutaway in it. To accept our eye. The indented hole, there you go. Perhaps, Spock. Let's pull out our eye key. Just like that, we're headed in. Here we need to make note of the symbols. Technically you don't have to if you have this Star Trek 25th anniversary walkthrough right here. We got you covered, but and there are a few more of these creatures here. It looks like Spock just took a big hit. You need to be careful. If any of your party members get too hurt, they will uh, we'll have to beam them back and we'll lose their expertise, so... We're going to need them moving forward, so you want to keep everyone healthy. So normally you'd have to make note of those symbols on the wall, but we got you covered. It doesn't change from game to game, so... So we're going to head in alone. Some good captain there. Kirk. Alright, so the symbols in the order we need to go, it's basically just left to right that we saw them on the walls earlier, I believe. It's just a few of these rooms you need to go through. And this might be the last one here. Go up. And now there's four. There we go. Alright, we're all through. Somehow they got ahead of me. Interesting. Didn't do any of the work, but that's fine. There's more symbols here, you'll notice. This puzzle's a bit simpler, because everything's in the room, I think, for the most part. We just need to hit these in the correct order. Left to right. Certainly not the most complicated puzzle, but make sure you step away between each one that you touch. Otherwise, it might just, you know, hit the one to the left or right. When that's not the one you mean to hit. As we brought everything back online. Druid can activate the computer by musical tones. There we go. Now we at least have some bearings of where we are. And now you'll notice a door has opened over here to the right. Pop inside and there should be a small deposit of dilithium crystals. This will be enough to at least get us moving for the time being. Sorry, a large deposit, but they're low grade, so... Kind of a wash, but it should be enough. I don't know. Does it even matter? Let's just take all we can carry, you know? I don't think those guys in the village below are using these things. 
They didn't even have access to it. All right, got our first mission accomplished. So far, so good. Well done. Now we finally get to move around on the uh, on the deck. We can interact with different crew members, get their takes on what's going on. We can try to have Uhura communicate with people or get a sensor reading from the immediate area from Spock. All the different, the standard roles that the crew members would take. You just want to keep everyone on their toes, run a red alert, and now we can choose our next destination here. We're going to go to Lykthos. Like, Lykythos? Something like that? This is going to be our next destination. There we'll look to truly replenish our collection of dilithium crystals with a higher grade. Can only go so far on the ones that we have right now. Power down all non-essential systems. The karaoke machine. What do you got, Spock? Captain destination in range. Alright. So this planet should have more of what we're looking for. That last planet was just a, a band-aid, essentially. This is the hardest planet in the game because it uh, involves the the battle I was referring to earlier, a fight with uh, a couple enemies. Not quite a boss, but uh, still annoying nonetheless. Yeah, they're garbage. I know, Scotty. We're going to get you something nicer. We got it here on the planet. Wasting time telling me things I already know. So in this case, your landing team should be Spock and a geologist. You can take a, a number of different, just nondescript redshirt specialty type uh, plus ones with you. So actually, we need to go down first. We'll just take the standard landing party because we need to uh, kind of trigger something, for lack of a better word, to uh, to make our return trip a bit safer. So we're just going to go down with the standard Spock and Bones loadout. Have another private chat with Spock on the elevator here. Not sure where McCoy is. Guess he's in Med Bay, and he'll meet us there. And just give me the odd spark. <laughs> All right, eight point four to one. I have a good feeling. There he is. <laughs> just I don't know something about that expression on his face. Always gets me. As we head down, you'll see why. We're just gonna touch down here for a quick second. There's one particular enemy that we need to learn something about. We'll need Spock's help to overcome these kind of mist monsters. It's down to the, uh, the south. So it doesn't really matter where you go at first, just kind of walk around a little bit. And the, uh, the creature from mythology will form from the steam and attack somebody. It takes a minute before uh, Spock realizes that they're basically just figments of our imagination, yet they're still... Alright, well, we don't want to be on this screen. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of one of the enemies from Secret of Mana, actually. Not as far apart from this game as can possibly be, but... Well, then again, you have three people in that party as well, so maybe not. So we need one of these little creatures to swoop down and smack us. And then Spock will make some sort of announcement. And we'll be able to do his famous mind meld trick. 
All right. Took my hit. You don't want to take too much damage, otherwise you'll have to go back prematurely. One more hitting. I think they'll pull us out. Spock, what do you say? Bones is down. Thankfully we don't have to go back. One of a non-essential personnel. It's the ground. Spock doesn't seem too concerned. Alright, even Spock took some damage now. Here we go, finally. They're only illusions. They cause injury because you believe in them. Do you wish me to mind meld with everyone in order to keep them from believing in them? Definitely tap A right there. And we'll do the, the famous mind meld trick. Even if he's down, you can still do it. Alright, and that should be it. At this point, everybody's dead, so we're going to want to head back to the ship. Three to beam up. And then they pop up. So you can go down with the geologist ahead of time, but... If he gets smacked around enough, then you'll have to come back anyway, so... I just assume, have Spock get hit, explain to us that they're not real, do the mind meld, and now we're going to swap out, make sure you select McCoy, and just keep hitting next. And eventually it'll come up with these generic guys, and we're going to go with Geology. So now we got a... a no-name Geologist, we got Spock, we're going to head back down to the surface, grabbing that exact same exchange again. Do you remember the odds from last time, Kirk? We can skip through this. Bit of a hint there, saying the geological activity. Glad we have our geologist. Guess he's wearing the blue. It's my mistake. I think we take a security officer with us a little bit later and he might be wearing a red shirt, but I'm gonna try to keep everyone alive. Here we go. Do your job. No name geologist. Alright, so we were kind of there earlier when the creatures were attacking us. Saw that little and a Triforce of Rocks south of here. Gonna head back here with the crew. Or landing team, at least. There you are. At this point, we want to switch our phasers for the first time to full power. Full effect, and then start blasting right here. At this rock. And once you shoot it enough times, you'll see a little glittering thing in the rock. Seems like it's taking forever, but just keep going. This is faster if you have a security officer with you, but we're going to hold off on having him. We want the geologist here to help us out finally. Good lord. Effect. So now we should be able to go up here and hit it with our tricord, tricorder. Right, not quite enough. We need a larger sample. So at this point, we want to head back to the ship, and now we're gonna make a quick crew swap. So now we're going to want to bring a security officer down with us. He'll be very useful, in, uh, along with Spock, in getting through this next part. So swap out your geologist. And while we're doing all this, let's go to our resident fact finder here. And give us a fluff fact about Star Trek 25th anniversary. Fluff, 
We've covered a lot of games where the Japanese and American instances of the game vary in one way or another. But this is the first game we've covered where the same developer in Interplay designed or had a hand in designing three completely different games at the same time which all bear the same name in Star Trek 25th Anniversary, albeit for different systems. In 1992, Interplay released three different versions of Star Trek 25th Anniversary, one for a number of computer systems, one for the Game Boy, and this for the NES, and again, they all serve up completely different plots. The DOS and Mac version even got a sequel the following year. Thank you very much, Fluff. Yeah, that is, uh, that is an odd circumstance, don't usually see that. I wouldn't have minded if this game had gotten a sequel for the NES, I do like it. As I said, I think it's, uh, it's a rare breed in a class all of its own. Combining a lot of different elements. A lot of adventure games like this on the system. We have our resident red shirt security officer with us this time. He's the only other one who can, uh, who will use his phaser. Even though Kirk says, you know, set phasers to whatever, it's not like... Spock ever really helps us out taking shots or anything. But the security guard will essentially fire where we fire for the most part. The AI is pretty bad as you'd expect, but... We're going to head east this time and south, just follow the linear path here. We're going to do some blasting once we come to a dead end, eventually. If you hadn't done the mind meld with Spock earlier, those steam monsters would be making your life pretty unbearable right about now. So we have a little robot block in the way. This is where Spock is handy to have with you and the team. Have him attempt to repair it. Then we just need to give it uh, some, some of that tiny trace amount of dilithium crystals we found on the other screen of this planet. Give it to the robot. It'll clear the way so we can get through. And just carry on right along to the west here. Love their walk, by the way. <laughs> They're kind of uh, dad bellies <laughs> just hanging out. Just the just their giant heads, by the way. Like Leecher Sue Larry proportions almost. Not quite as extreme, but then even if they're caught behind a rock, as soon as they clear the screen or you get them off the screen, they'll eventually kind of meander and catch up to you. We'll go inside this cave here. And now we need to uh just start blasting full power at this door here. Scan it first, that'll put the security officer hopefully right where he needs to be. Spock is great with the clues. He's like a mini walkthrough throughout this entire game. Always giving you hints and stuff. So set those phasers back to full. Start firing. You and the security officer won't take too long. And head on inside. Alright, so this is the most dangerous part of the game. This is where the game really earns its its five. There's a few things we need to collect while we're in here. It's a puzzle or two we need to piece together. So we have security robots around here. Gonna attempt to have Spock Finagle with him, and yeah, he says, I don't know what that did. Thanks a lot, Spock. Doesn't really matter, all right. Let's go over here, we'll find our first component. The red one. We also need to grab a blue and a yellow. I always have to scan everything, just put it in your pants. So we need all three of these, and then we'll feed them into slots in the, uh, the computer. Pretty soon, grab a piece of space trash right here. Collect a sample of the trash. We'll use this for a kind of a clever puzzle. 
upcoming. Puzzles aren't too complex in this game, but you know, you gotta give the game credit. See a robot there just for a second. Leave the screen, we're not gonna have to fight that one just yet, but it's coming up. The most annoying part of this game. Come on, Spock. Your Starfleet officer. Alright, so, last, as soon as you come in with your security officer, try to not take too much damage. It's a bit of a crapshoot. There's gonna be one more up here. Do yourself a favor, don't go too far to the top of the screen. I'm gonna blast this thing. And there we go. That's about as well as you can do that. We wanna. Just grab this without going any higher. If you go all the way up to the top, you risk the uh, the bottom robot respawning, which is extremely annoying trying to get out of here. It's pretty much impossible to get by these robots without destroying them first, and you can see in that exchange of fire we did take some damage, so... But that should be about all we have to worry about in terms of uh, enemies on this planet. We're doing okay health-wise. Now we have two of the, the modules. And the timing is a little interesting here. So we can't blast this robot, but we need its help. So, gotta be careful, because it, it does knock you down. Unfortunately, we can't tell our uh, other officers just to get out of the way, but... So now we're gonna go into our pants. We're gonna throw that trash right from this spot. It'll tell you there's a force field we can't get by to grab that module. But as soon as you put that trash on top of the module, you'll see the robot will scoop it up. Now we just have to make sure it's on this side of the force field. Get ready to blast. Put the thing down, and there we go. That should be the final one. We just need to load these three modules now into the computer. Which is just south of here through this little gate. Feed the blue one in here. Psychotronic, if you say so. Next we have the yellow one right next to it. Don't think we need that repellent anymore, but... <laughs> Carried around just the same, I suppose. And finally, the red module. And you would think, you know, with all the trouble, relatively speaking, for this game, that some giant door would open or something, but not the case. Instead, and you wouldn't have any clue as to where to go, but basically we want to follow kind of north and west the entire way over into that corner. And, uh... What looked like a, I guess, a, a frozen alien who was trapped in a panel in the wall before is now suddenly alive, so we'll go talk to that. Yeah, you just expect, like, some big door opening to some giant room, but no, just, we can talk to this thing now. Thank you for rescuing my people. Did we do that? Guess we did with those modules. We don't really care. That's fine. We just want the crystals. Do you mind? Those are those things that we saw outside that were attacking us. In our debt, so I assume that means we can have a whole bunch of uh, dilithium crystals. The good stuff. Alright. So if we need more, we can come back, but as long as we know where we're going, it should not be an issue as we beam out. I like not even like acknowledging the alien or saying anything in response, just take what we want and beam the heck out of there. Alright, you heard the man. So we'll head for Shroud 4, but yeah, Kirk is saying this is going to take us on a course through dangerous Romulan space. I don't really understand this part, if I'm honest. I mean, the the alien 
literally said we're forever in their debt, or your debt, they said to us. And they said you can have crystals whenever you want, as many as you need, and yet we're, you know, still hard up for a gas station at this point. We have to put our crew at risk by heading through Romulan space, see all their planets. We're going to go to the only neutral planet, Shroud 4. And have Chekhov plot in a course. I'm sure this will go all right, right? When do they mention, you know, something bad could happen and then it doesn't happen? Nope, there you go. <laughs> Soon, about five seconds into Romulan space, their armada uncloaks and comes after us. Let's see how our diplomatic skills are here. Rather than risk going to war with the uh, entire Romulan force in this sector. Hello there. That's a look. You violated the peace treaty of Stardate 1200.5. We're out of gas. Give us a lift. Tow us. Yeah, we don't want to be here. Romulan space sucks. Just gotta run our tags, make sure we're not lying. And they say, all right. Yeah. Checks out. That's pretty cool. So we got a personal escort now from the Romulans. Yeah, you would think there would be a climactic battle right here. Lots of bloodshed, but no. It worked out. So we carry on to Shroud 4. And hopefully this should be the last time we have to worry about fuel for the rest of the game. Once we get it sorted here. It's like a volcanic planet. You could do a scan of the planet if you want, but... We're just gonna head down. We don't need this security officer at this point. So we're gonna swap him out, and we're gonna take McCoy with us, actually. See if we can't get him to cough up one of his famous lines. I'm a doctor, not a... insert whatever noun. Yeah, the home of shady dealings. <laughs> Con artists. Why, yes, Captain. Romulan renegades. Alright, we'll see if that comes into play. I'm gonna skip over my man this time, just head down to Shroud 4. We know he's good at his job. Alright, once again, there's a bit more to do than we're gonna show here, but we're just gonna show you the, the fast track of how to, uh, how to get off this rock. First, scan this plant. Yes. Pick it up and put it in your pants. Do so, because you never know when you might need it. To paraphrase. Ken Borden. Might not even be getting that name right, but... Stun one of these butterflies as well. I'm a doctor, not an entomologist. There you go. And just uh, put the butterfly in our pants. Grab this flower over here. This flower is very intriguing, Jim. <laughs> God love their camaraderie. Now you head up into this building here. Kind of a alien hotel. Grab the room key right here. Somehow they have the same music as that first planet we touched down on. In the village where the guy was dancing. 
Pop in that room key right here. Head on inside. You have a very sexy alien there on the bed. Perhaps one that we've... There you go. Had dealings with before. <laughs> I don't know. Spock? Bones? Can you uh, maybe wait outside for a little bit? Captain's prerogative, you know? Give her the flower. And she'll uh, help us out. There you go. Sure we can't stay a little bit longer? Oh well. Ignore the other room for now. We'll be coming back this way eventually. That guy just do a face palm? Picard style? One of the most famous memes. So we now head to the west and we'll see if we can't find that rock that she was... Oh, there it is. <laughs> The one that's blocking our path. Just use the remote here, and just like that, it moves out of the way. And we'll find a stash over here. Look at that. Hidden stash. Bottle of Saurian drink. Sack of credits, and a coded letter from Harry Mudd to some Romulan renegades. That could be damning evidence. Yeah, let's... Grab all that. Never know when you might need a black male hairy mud. So now we're going to head up and go into the building to the west here. This guy's not going to let us in right away. Yeah. Doing his bouncer thing. Space bouncer. Federation types in our fine establishment. Thankfully, he can be easily bought with some credits. I'd shut him up pretty quickly. <laughs> Alright, head inside. Maybe we will start something, I don't know. Big green alien here. I think we know him. Snake-like creature. Lizard-like creature that we tangled with in that one episode. Hence the music, actually, I think a reference to that. Just show him the pretty butterfly and he gets hungry. Just wait for him to get out of the way and just kind of walk by him. And you can ignore Crocodile Dundee there. Just head to the east and down here. You can eavesdrop on this deal between... I guess mud and the renegades? Is that what's going on here? Thirty minutes in the hotel room. Remember that other hotel room? The only other hotel room on the planet? That's where, where we will be going, but first we should confront mud, find out what's going on, what his role in all of this is. Spock seems like he wants to talk to Paul Hogan, but we'll just ignore that. Again, you want to experience more of the game, chat with some of the other locals, that's your business. Go ahead and do that, but... Yeah, we know about your business. This is where you go near... Inventory and show him the letter. Hmm. <laughs> Don't you now? Pretty clever, Mud. Alright, so... <laughs> Dang it, Harry. So even though Harry left, what, five seconds before we did, we're gonna go straight to that hotel room now. It's always the case, isn't it? Wait till we get there, don't want to spoil anything. I'm 
Try to keep up. Just head east and just go right in. Don't need a card at this point. See some blaster marks. Phase phaser marks on the wall. You know again. Five seconds ahead of us, but I guess they made Harry. This is nice, they just automatically beam you over to those coordinates. There's Spock's communicator. Pick that back up. Just looks like a rock if you ask me, but that's fine. Do we really have to scan what we already... <laughs> wonder if that's why he lifted it in the first place. I'd like to give him the benefit of the doubt. Alright, so while I'm fumbling around trying to find the entrance to this cave where they took Harry, let's go to Fluff for a fluff fact about Star Trek. Star Trek was created in 1964 by former World War II fighter pilot and later freelance writer Gene Roddenberry. After pitching his idea for the adventures of the Starship Enterprise to MGM and getting no offers, he pitched it to Desilu Productions, the studio owned by the iconic Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball. As a production company, Desilu Productions was having financial difficulties at the time and hadn't sold a successful single pilot in five years. In fact, its only success at the time was The Lucy Show, which was powered by the celebrity of Lucille Ball herself. Not only did Star Trek turn out to be what was their first big outside hit, but it was important as it was arguably the first show to regularly feature racial diversity in lead roles on a weekly basis. Thank you very much, Fluff. Yes, Spirit, there's the entrance to the... Very tucked away, hard to find. Pop down here, and you grab this sheet. Throw that in the inventory. Again, never know when you might need it. A sheet may be useful later. What about the chairs, Spock? What about the table? Might they be useful later? How does he just know? Alright, so we're actually gonna... It actually is useful. We're gonna throw the sheet on top of this security camera. I love it. It's the future. We have all this high-tech technology you would think to disable security cameras, and we just end up throwing a sheet on top of it. But if it works, it works. So this guy's gonna throw us in the brig. I know nothing adventurous, Captain. Yeah, just shoot us all down. I guess Bones just voluntarily surrendered. We can very quickly use Spock's mind-melding abilities to uh, Jedi mind trick the... Sorry to mix famous sci-fi properties there. Now we just carry on right along. And there's Harry. Looking quite silly. Switch off the force field and talk to Harry. So we'll head outside and he should... This guy got up very quickly, by the way. Just ignore him. Walk on right by. Bones just pops right back up. And head outside, and here he should, well, maybe not waiting for us, but I think he did leave us a note. Along with some dilithium crystals, or information on where we can get some fuel for our ship. There we go. And check what he left us in the package. Creative dilithium. There we go. Alright. Yeah, they just kind of warp you or beam you up all around where you need to go. So it's very convenient in that sense, but uh, yeah, just like that, we are done with Shroud 4. We should have enough fuel at this point to get where we need to go. Good to know, Scotty. Just a taste of the kind of information you can, you can get. So now we're going to head to Iosha, finally.
You can take the karaoke machine for a whirl. I think we're good on power at this point. Uh oh. I thought we were chill with the Romulans. We're, are we still in Romulan space at this point? We passed the neutral area. I would think this would be a... Someone else's space. I didn't look too closely. I don't think they'd be following us without a reason. Oh right, yeah, we did uh, spring one of their prisoners in Harry Mud. Alright, so at this point, it's time to throw down. The best strategy in this case, in my experience, because this part could be actually pretty difficult. Just keep tracking it at first until you get that lock. Just keep going up. A is your photon torpedo. You can also use the laser, except you don't want to, uh, you don't want to linger in front of them too often, as they will fire some very powerful weaponry right back at you. Basically, if they're not right in front of you, it's difficult for them to get hits in on you. You just want to catch them when they're moving around, for the most part. Get that lock on. In that case, they went behind us. We need to do a 180 and flip around. That lock. And eventually they'll go down. It's not too tricky as long as you stick to that. That plan for the most part. Smoked them. Good work, team. As we continue on now to Iosha. So they show, uh, they show you a lot of different looks in this game. You know, there's a little adventure puzzle solving and... Just kind of going around and exploring and talking to local aliens. You have a little bit of that ground-based combat. You even get a ship-to-ship -ship combat. This looks a heck of a lot like Shroud 4, if you ask me, but that's fine. So we're going to land. This time we're going to swap out McCoy for a historian. So, swap through Spock and McCoy. I don't think you can have a second Spock. Get a history specialist. This is the last specialist you need to take with you, by the way. You never have to take the biologist. Unfortunately for them. Probably be useful on that first planet. Some of the, the local flora and fauna, but... Maybe their expertise extends to botany, I don't know, but... Anyway, I've never used one. As we head down to Iosha, and we're going to find the, the planet in uh, quite a state. It's a bit of a pile. It's like Xenon in Space Quest 12. Not looking great. So we're going to head to search through this pile here. We're going to find an old library card. <laughs> library computer access code card. And then head into this large ruined building. It's what's left of their library. Come over to the west side of the building and access the... looks like a... Like a desk or an organ or something, but it's their old library computer terminal. Pop in your inventory and use that lib card. The Ioceans were trying to develop dimensional gate. Aha, uh -huh, so something happened in the past. That ruined things. We left a someone, let's just say, left a communicator. And uh, obviously we can't mess with underdeveloped civilizations like that. Part of the Starfleet rules and regulations, but thank you, Historian. No-name Historian. Now we're gonna do the famous slingshot around the sun to head back in time maneuver. <laughs> you know what? Different properties approach this in different ways, you know? In the uh, Back to the Future universe, you just need a DeLorean traveling at 88 miles per hour. Here we just need to fly around the sun and uh, 
do some sort of timing. And just like that, we're back, I don't know, thousands of years or something like that. Just goes to show how one tiny, seemingly innocuous mistake can really completely change the trajectory of everything. It's the, the butterfly effect or, or what have you. Again, not to reference it too many times, but Back to the Future 2. Marty with that sports betting book. Biff found it. Completely changed the future for the worse. Let's hear Biff. Anyway, here's Iosha in the past. Looks a lot like Earth. Hey, do you know what's going on, Spock? Yeah. I didn't want to name names, but it was... It was Bones McCoy. So we're taking him with us. And we might even get one more variation on the... Darn it, Jim. I'm a, a doctor, not a... I think a veterinarian in this case. <laughs> but we'll see. This is pretty much the final stretch. The game, you know, takes about an hour or so to beat, but uh, most of it, it just takes place over, you know, what, four planets, something like that? It's the most Earth-like planet we've been on. Huh? Hoodlums. Set phasers to stun, right? Give him a couple shots, put him down. It should be okay, assuming you didn't switch those over. <laughs> Over to kill. Diamond. There you go. Until we can find the owner. I guess it's not this guy. We're just assuming. Guy gives us a deck of marked cards. Sure. If you're offering it, it's probably of some use. That's what I've come to understand. A sheet. A plant. You never know. Alright, so there's a lot of different buildings here on Iosha. Sigma Iosha, so... Dog was shot. What can you do, Bones? Wait for it. I'm a doctor. Not a veterinarian. <laughs> but I'll try. So crotchety. Love it. Alright, in exchange we get a gumball. Thanks, kid. Could come in handy. Actually does for one of the trickier puzzles. <laughs> this bone is interesting. <laughs> My goodness. The transport guy and just the rest of my crew's fascination with everything that we every piece of garbage we find on the ground, literally in some cases. This garbage might be useful. Should we shove it in our pants, Captain? Gotta love it. Alright, so we're gonna hug this building here and head south. Again, there's about four or five buildings here. We wanna pop over and grab this stick, I think it is. It appears to be a wooden stick, about 79.34 centimeters. I would venture to say when we're dealing in centimeters, you've got it spot on to the one the one hundredth uh, column right there. When it comes to this stick. So now actually we can, now that we have this stick, we can combine it with the bubble gum. I can just remember what the exact order of combining these items are. 73.21. There's kind of your, your hint that the, uh, the stick could work because it's a couple more centimeters longer than the, uh, the item. Here we go, Jim, that's very ingenious. <laughs> Somebody has to chew the gum first, right? I mean, the kid didn't give us like already been chewed gum. ABC. Good work, Captain. Alright, now we have some coins. Which we'll use for an old school payphone, even old school at the time of this Star Trek 25th anniversary walkthrough right here on Video Games 101. By the way, I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. Do one of these classes every week, usually a bit more eventful with in regards to having the other TAs involved in everything. 
like everyone just knows us on this planet. Which makes sense, because we were here before, I guess, when Bones ruined everything. Ever. Just scanning this drunk. Appears to be unconscious, Gemma. Gotta love modern science. Modern medicine. By rocks, I assume that's 1930s gangster slang for diamonds. Let's give them to him. Now we get the stolen plates. This uh, last portion of the game here on Iosha, it's just, it's basically a fetch quest, just exchanging items for different characters around here. try to go in there quite yet. There's a lot of rival gangster factions around here. Now we need to take these plates to the police station. Goody two-shoes Kirk and his crew. Starfleet regulation, you understand? I think that might be the building. It's probably not the one guarded by the, uh, the gangster. Pop in here. Give the, uh, the constable the plates here. Can't drop anything as far as I know. In terms of items, we're just stuck with that repellent and everything. There you go. You might be wondering, well, what the heck do we get out of that? What's the point of that? Wait for it. We're gonna go in this top building here and head in the back area. Now that it's been shut down, quote-unquote. I think we just... We just blast this door. Crude lock. You'd think we could just shoot it. After all, we destroyed that uh, kind of rock wall, reinforced whatever on that that one planet, but... Anyway, just use the hairpin. It's sneaky and... Oh, you need to use this with the bone, actually, I think. You need to, like, start the lockpick with, I mean, the hairpin, and then uh, use the bone on top of it, too. Like, it doesn't really make sense, if I'm honest. It's not the most obvious puzzle, but I guess when you have so few items in your inventory, at least ones you haven't used yet, you can kind of figure that out for yourself, but there we go. All right, so now we're in the back room. They got this, uh, oh money printing scheme going on here as we scan it let's see we have counterfeit dollars five thousand dollars of the local currency i do like the idea that spock would just go into a i don't know say an unattended vault in a bank <laughs> not sure the circumstances in this scenario but to say captain i found 100 million dollars of the local currency should i add it to our inventory okay spock Got no problems. We're going to use the uh, payphone here now. With those coins that we found in the grate. The operator. And we have the number in our inventory, so fish into your pants and pull out the number for the operator on the other side. Yeah, we're looking for that walkie-talkie. All right, so now we can head to the uh, the mobster place. The one down at the south. We're gonna finish up at the one up top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you gotta say. All right, so we'll talk to this guy right quick. All 
Oh, great. So the communicator has been stolen. It's just a big fetch quest, like I said, just... Just have you moving at the uh, exact opposite locations all over this planet to maximize this part. Let's now go see uh, Krako. As we do the Starfleet shuffle here. They all kind of look a little drunk too. Or like children pretending they're adults when they're walking around like trying to be important. I feel like this guy's gonna flash me. Malone owns it now. In the card room. Alright, so we're gonna head back to the bar. And that's where we'll be finishing this game. Hopefully you have those that marked deck of cards from the start. I mean, you, I guess you need to, otherwise you wouldn't have the diamonds in stopping those robbers. Which started this whole thing, so now we head to the back room. And we're going to play a game of cards. And I guess uh, Kirk just knows how to use those marked cards. <laughs> and the guy has no problem, apparently, using our deck of cards. First, we got to put the money down that we got, the 5,000 of the local currency. Got to make sure you say no here, because we need to use our own deck of cards. We'll be ready as soon as we start using my deck, which is going to allow us to cheat and win this game. Okay, Kirk, we'll use your card. I'm honestly not sure what you do if you uh, if you lose this game without using the marked cards. I don't know if it's a, a game over. Because there aren't really other... Every now and then, I suppose, you know, you get torched in the, uh, the Romulan spaceship battle and stuff. But now we have this little outro where it just looks like they kind of photoshopped the heads onto their bodies. But That's right. It's a fair question, Spock. <laughs> it was for the greater good. Like, Kirk can't be bothered to actually turn his head. Just kind of eyeballing him with his peripheral. Does it control us? The real question here at the end of this Star Trek 25th anniversary playthrough walkthrough here. And there's that classic fourth wall breaking trope there at the end. Mr. Sulu, take us home. And there you are. The end. Star Trek 25th Anniversary for the NES. Thank you so much for attending this class. Again, a reminder, we do one of these classes every single week. This is a very low-key game, I have to admit. We usually... These uh, classes are a bit more lively, usually. But, uh, yeah, consider subscribing to enroll. Really would help us out. Give this video a like if you don't mind, too. That does help us in planning future classes for you. And, uh, yeah. Leave a comment if you remember this game. Maybe just are a fan of Star Trek in general, and we will see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.